Howdy guys, Josh Collins here from ASUS and um, I'm hanging out with Dominic from NitroWare. I uh, just thought I would show you a bit of the flexibility with the uh, base clock. So um, at the moment running along at 92.7 at, at megahertz, um, that's because we're, we're playing around a little bit with the RAM, currently running at 3089 megahertz at 14, 16, 16, 32, 1T. Um, just having a bit of a play there. Uh, can, can also go go higher, but uh, what we're going to show now is a bit of uh, base, uh, base clock fun. So, uh, so yep. how far are we going on base clock? We're going to go up to 225 megahertz. Okay, uh, that's a quite high. So that's something we can't do before. We only can do it with Skylake and your motherboard. Correct, correct. So um, you can can go further still. Uh, the guys back at, at, at HQ, they've been running, you know, 350, 400 megahertz base clock on, on air and needs all-in-one water cooling solutions. Um, but I just thought I'd show you. So, what type of, of RAM would dirty. what type of RAM would an enthusiast need to buy to get some insane clocks like that? So, um, when you're pushing high uh, base clock, the main thing uh, that to be mindful of is your uh, multipliers. So, your RAM multipliers you can set pretty low, um, but they can also go quite high. So, um, I'll just load defaults for a moment. And I'll show you um, what the uh, potential range is at stock. And then we can even just key in and, and get some idea of, of, of where things are at. So I'll just go over here, uh, load optimized def defaults. Okay, so uh, I'll just change that to manual. So we've got all of the uh, DRAM frequencies. So basically you can start off from uh, 800 megahertz and the multipliers go all the way down to 42, so, okay, 66. so that's what the, the, your, your UFI supports. So for 2015, what what DDR4 speed are you advertising for your boards? Yeah, so the magic boards, number. The boards, uh, officially speaking, uh, we're using the the Z1 uh, uh, Z170 Deluxe. That'll officially speaking support up to 3600 plus. But um, DDR4 frequencies are scaling significantly. Um, on Skylake compared with, say, uh, Haswell E. Um, but uh, let's have a little look at this base clock stuff. I'll just go through, load another profile. Um, so what RAM are we using for this test today? Uh, for this test today, we're using some Vengeance LPX from uh, Corsair. So this, this particular um, stuff is the new launch stuff. Uh, this packaging here, and um, this has been binned on uh, uh, Z170, so it's matched up with these platforms. Um, certainly finding that. Yeah, and these these won't block the heat sink. Really awful. One of the um, things as well. Anyone that has RAM from a um, a uh, X99 platform, what you'll find is that you'll actually get more speed out of it on a Z170 platform, and that's because the the integrated uh, 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 memory controller IMC on the Skylake platform is really strong. It's really capable, um, and just there's a lot of flexibility. So, uh, looking here for a moment, start up CPU Z. Um, we've just booted in at 225 megahertz, like it's it's nothing. Um, to give a bit of context for that. Um, on previous generation with, with Haswell, if you're going to be hitting up towards 225 megahertz base clock, you'd be running liquid nitrogen on, on PCH, on CPU, and just... Just for a reminder, I'll review what temperature is liquid nitrogen. LN2 and liquid helium. Okay. LN2 and H... So... Um, hey, what's the... What's the... HE2. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, um, uh, LN2, you're looking at... Uh, well, from memory, it's minus 176, minus 178. That sounds about, that, about yeah. right. Yeah, and um, liquid helium from memory is a couple of degrees off Kelvin. Um, and uh, what's what's Kelvin? Zero Kelvin is about minus minus 200 and something um, uh, Celsius, isn't it? I can't remember my science off the top of my head. Woo! 
Well, that's not uh, what yeah, we're doing. It's very highly unethical. We should yeah. stop. You're putting me on the spot, dude. Yeah. There are very few people in the world who have actually used liquid helium. It's extremely expensive, and there are very few platforms that actually utilize the cooling capacity of it. So um, I'll just remind I'll remind our viewers that it's actually an access board that for liquid for liquid uh, helium, but. Unfortunately, not, that's somebody else's uh, CPU, not this one we're looking at today. But yeah, it was yeah. a nice Asus board. Yeah, yeah. And um, previous generation as well, different generations. So um, the highest clocks are still on the uh, uh, 3770K um, Ivy Bridge platform. And, and, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how far Skylake goes, um, given that Skylake is really more similar to Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge than it is Haswell and that's largely due to the fact that the fibre has been taken off the core again and we've got voltage regulation back on the uh, board itself so yeah um, there it is uh, 225 megahertz kind of boring nowadays <laughs> so what, what does this mean to our in, in, in enthusiasts to okay, just wants to so, buy the buy we're gonna buy Skylake maybe on launch week and they're yeah. like, so excited to overclock it yeah. so what is what is it getting such a higher base clock that we couldn't get before what does it mean to them what can, what what's it, it gonna it enable for them or rather why is it happening um it's happening because the base clock is no longer tied to the the dmi bus so the pci express um uh, weakness that was there is no longer there and, and for those of you that aren't aware uh, typically you get to about you know 103 104 megahertz on um, the uh, 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 PCIe bus and all of a sudden the system falls so, over you get instability so just in a nutshell from yep. what this demo we're doing now with 200 basically, basically Skylack this is a 6, 6700k part yep. Skylack, which is launching next which is launching by the time you see this video, yep. basically a lot of uh, restrictions have been removed into Nova Clock is Dream. Yeah, it's a lot and of fun. It's a very flexible platform. So um, in terms of having the base clock um, separate from the uh, uh, DMI bus, or rather unhinged from the uh, DMI bus, it means that you can run some pretty ludicrous base clock frequencies, but they have no impact directly on system performance. Um, so for example, previously, if you just nudged the base clock from 100 megahertz to 101 megahertz, um, you would actually get a performance gain in things like 3D Mark and, and gaming and, and uh, whatnot. But um, that gain isn't there anymore due to that unhinged uh, uh, relationship between the base clock and the DMI. So, um, yeah, you know, it's it's fun. You're going to get some pretty big numbers coming through, but at the same time, it's um, not all about the uh, numbers. It's about the flexibility and configuring it so that you have a CPU multiplier, a, a memory multiplier, and a base clock that are all working within unison to bring out the best within the platform. So um, that's where you can be running um, a base clock within the, the, the 90 range, you know, you might be running a base clock of 97 or 98 because it aligns better with your, uh, you know, DRAM and, and then you can have an appropriate multiplier to get the CPU frequency that you want. So, um, yeah, from an o overclocker's perspective, it's the flexibility that makes this platform interesting and fun. And um, certainly those of us that are into, you know, clocking a lot of RAM, then, um, We've got a, a lot of testing ahead of us, but um, a lot of fun as well in terms of testing where the boundaries are at. Um, back at, at, at HQ, they've been doing um, four, four gigahertz single dim on air and uh, a 3800 um, uh, dual dim on, on air as well. So be getting those sort of frequencies. So we have a RAM clock here. So what are, what are our specs on the memory? Um, we with this everything's two? pretty low on, on this particular run just because there was, I was just demoing the bus speed more than anything, so I didn't bother, um, ch you know, s screwing around too much with the RAM. So the we RAM have... Is just very slow, very slow. That's, you okay, know, 2100, so 16, yeah. 18, 18, 36, but, you know... Um, okay, so we've just... we've just Previously, said, yeah. if we have a look through here, um, I've done a whole bunch of testing. These are all my screenshots. This is what um, we've been working on today, people. This for you guys. Yeah, um, we tend to go through... You know, look at where we can go with the, the performance, yeah, and yeah. Um, okay. yeah. when we zoom in there, you, you know, this is where we started looking at some really nice numbers. So, uh, uh, 3540 at 16, 18, 18, 36, 2T, it's quite nice. We go back one, um, 3400, 16, 18, 18, 36, 1T, that's nice as well. So, these are 
Um, these were done at, at 24-7 stable. So how far can we go? How far can we go? It's a really good question. And that's one thing that we're going to be finding out um, where the barriers are at over the next couple of months as, as overclockers grab it. And, you know, grab this new platform and just torture it. So, okay. So now testing today, what's, what's the best we have done? Let's show you what the best we've done yeah, so, in our um, results here. In terms, of, collected. in terms of frequency, it would be um, this one here where we've got uh, a, a result of uh, 3,538 megahertz with, with CAS 16. Um, and then uh, what else we've got here? We've got some nice um, C14 runs as well. Let's have a little look. Um, do, 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 do. Here's a where are we coming through C14? And runs. I just remind our, our viewers we're not even using the, the top of the line board here, we're using a mid, um, middle to upper range board. It's not a Z170 Deluxe, it's not even the wrong board. So, this, these are results are rich. Even more fine grained results can be achieved with the higher boards than this one. Yeah, certainly the, the extreme will, will provide um, a lot of. A lot more headroom, a lot more tweaking capability, and um, certainly a lot more focus towards trying to get some, you know, silly high frequencies. But I think what we wanted to do here was just demonstrate the fact that the the signature series platform is still a very capable platform as well. And um, so, you know, here here we've got three thousand and and eighty four megahertz at uh, 14, 14, 14, 32, 1 T. Um, to be able to do frequencies like that is, is great. And um, it's just the flexibility is where I, I keep coming back to things, you know, and then just being like, wow, yeah, you know, that's capable. Um, and it's a bit of fun. It's, you just get to play around with it and see where you can pitch your hardware. So um, what else we've got here? Like I've got a run here with um, 32 gig of Dominator Platinum. Um, let's look at this. So 32 gig, as you can see here, and it's running along at, at 3200, 16, 18, 18, 36, 2T. Um, to be able to do those sort of uh, frequencies with such huge density, and that's across four dims as well. Yep. Um, so to do, you know, four, four by eight gig at 3200 C16, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. And it's just going to continue to evolve as as the memory vendors are, are bidding the, the uh, ICs and, and getting you know the cream of the crop and and then you know the the overclockers and and enthusiasts are pushing that further, um, it's just going to be a really exciting time. So just to wrap up and give our viewers a concise overview of what they can expect with Sky. So what numbers are we looking at? If, if they buy the setup and they wish to overclock with the ASUS board, yep. typical clock speed. For CPU, for memory and voltage, it's a very concise overview of what they're going to expect to achieve so they know whether to spend spend the hard earned money at launch, yep. whether it's going to provide them with what they, what they desire in terms of overclocking. All right, so I think it's fair to say you can certainly expect to see um, 3,000 plus on the RAM, um, pretty much a no-brainer. Um, I've been playing around with some, some 2666 kits um, and they're doing over 3,000, no problems. Um, the, you do need to give it a little bit of voltage love to be doing those sort of high frequencies. So 1.35 volts um, on the uh, DRAM voltage. Um, and for, for 24 seven operation, uh, me personally, now this is not um, an, an ASUS warranted voltage range or anything. I want to make that extremely clear. Yeah, your, mom, your just, mileage may vary based yeah, on the silicon lottery. Exactly, and, and on top of that as well, um, this is just enthusiast Josh speaking, not ASUS Josh speaking. So from an enthusiast perspective, we can expect to be running, say, 1.4 volts as the maximum 24-7 um, solution with active air cooling for your memory, uh, one, uh, 1.4 volts for the CPU uh, vCore and vCache, and that's on a, uh, the uh, same, same rail now. So you set the one um, setting within the BIOS. If you can, and I'd certainly be saying, find out where your maximum overclock is between 1.3, 1.35 volts. For the VCC IO and VCSA, um, so your uh, system agent and IO, um, I really do uh, suggest not going beyond 1.15 volts. Um, and uh, what else are we looking at? PLL so, so termination, 1.1 volts. Typical clock speed, so there'll be middle fours. Yeah, so 
Um, I've got a pretty average, um, like this is the lower percentile sort of samples. Um, uh, so my uh, chip that I've been playing around with here, um, uh, for, for, uh, tops out 4.8 gig, um, but then there are gems that are doing, you know, 5.3, 5.2. Um, so it's really just a matter of going through. Your mileage will vary. Um, it's just a matter of how much. So the takeaway of this, listeners, is wait. By the time you watch this video, it will be Skylake launch, and yep. then not only will be our result, our review. You can look at to see what results we we have received from our launch sample. You can look at some other media, and you can from. Using the total of all these results, you can see what the average is for the overclock at launch time, and that will give you an over, overview of what you can expect. If you see it um, before launch, then you might see some random results here and there on different enthusiast overclocking blogs, and those will be the exception to the rule rather yeah. than what you would expect if you go out on launch day and buy. So just be mindful that your mileage may vary and Absolutely. The, the, the speeds that were achievable that have been reported will vary quite significantly. And not only that, um, typically around launch, you'll see a lot of the big hero clocks coming through um, and that's not necessarily directly in, in, indicative of what to expect um, the end user to uh, get. So that's one of the things where um, after just after launch, that the day after launch, I actually look. I really do look forward to going into a, a PC shop and buying myself a, a 6700K for home usage and um, playing around with that and comparing the retail silicon with the engineering sample uh, silicon that I've got here. And, and um, I'll be really interested to also see what what Dominic uh, gets with his uh, uh, qualification sample um, and seeing. That, what the differences are between the uh, silicons, so um, should be should should be some fun, and I think enthusiasts are set for a couple of months of um, interesting new platform to play around with. Yeah, should be good. Well, that's it, folks. Intel I, uh, Core of uh, six Gen Core i7 6700K and ASUS Z170 Deluxe overclockers dream. Thank you, Josh. No worries. You're welcome.